I mean, this is an amazing sleeve, am I right? It's really good. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Bethany. I'm the girl behind Well Love Knits, and today I wanted to go through part two of my Me Made wardrobe. So a couple of weeks ago I shared some of my favorite knit pieces in my closet that I've made myself. That was only a small glimpse because I have much more to share. So while I shared only a small glimpse of my closet in the last video, I thought I would take you through some of the other pieces that I have and love very much. Um, some of them are a mix between patterns that I've followed and then patterns that I've made myself. And then I'll even show you some sewing projects because I did share in last week's video that I do like to sew from time to time. So I do have a couple of pieces that I've made for my closet. So the first one that I want to share is one that I really love. I love the design of this piece. It's sweater number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And you know that I love her patterns very much. I think she makes some very classic items, which is something that I personally like to gravitate towards, not designs that are so out there. Things that I know are like classic staples. And this sweater really is it. I think it's a really great staple, staple piece, and it's just a simple raglan sweater, but with the way that she designed the raglan stitches, I think it just elevates it a little bit. The thing that I don't like so much about this sweater is the fiber that I chose to use. So I actually used Super Trooper Wool by Wool and the Gang, and that is fine, but then I paired it with one strand of mohair. I really love the combination together. I think the color matches very well. You can, if you're looking at it in closer inspection, you can see the mohair strands, but I actually like that look uh, to be able to see some variation in the fibers. But um, the thing that I don't like so much using this mohair, I don't know if maybe it's just the type of mohair that I used, but since this is a turtleneck that sits very close to the neck, I actually find that it's quite itchy. That's why I just don't wear it as often as I probably would if I didn't pair it with mohair. I don't know, maybe the mohair that I was using just isn't soft, because even now that I'm touching it, it's kind of itchy. And I'm personally somebody that doesn't have a lot of skin sensitivity. I just think if this were a looser fit, as in like the neckline wasn't so tight, I would wear it a lot more, but it's really just that itchiness around the neck that I just can't deal with. For the next piece, this is something that you've seen me wear actually, and I got some questions about it, so I had to look into it and figure out what the heck this was, because I knew it was a kit that I had followed from Wool and the Gang, but I didn't remember at the time that it's the Vivian cardigan. Uh, this is a cardigan that's knit in garter stitch throughout. It's knit in four panels and then stitched up in the back. Uh, with a crochet hook. So yeah, it's like a slouchy cardigan. It's uh, really easy to just pair with everything. It was knit with shiny happy cotton in the timber wolf uh, colorway and it's a perfect like neutral color. See I love the sleeves, the way that they sit, the cuff is not too tight, uh, just overall very slouchy. Um, what I've liked to do with it recently is wrap it so that it kind of looks like a top and then tuck it into my jeans. When I first made this pattern I was still pretty new to knitting. There are quite a few mistakes that if I were to redo this pattern I probably wouldn't make. Um, things that I don't really like about it would be, you know, I think I messed up a stitch in the back. Um, which you can't tell in the front but <laughs> I was always self-conscious uh, wearing it and I tried to hide it as best as possible. If I can find it I'll show you. Um, Ah, yeah. So right here, you can see there's like a little hole. I don't know really, I think I dropped a stitch, uh, didn't notice it until later, tried to fix it with um, a needle and some yarn, didn't really work out. But anyway, I still wear it, who the heck really cares. The thing that I don't like about this, because it's not a strong suit of mine, is the technique to crochet uh, the two back panels together. I don't really like the way that this looks because it looks really messy. I think what I would do if I were to knit it again, I would knit the back panel all in one and then separate for the front and the back. It doesn't really look bad necessarily, um, it's just, I think it just looks sloppy, you can tell that it was handmade. This one took me a really long time to make because I abandoned it for a little while and, you know, it didn't turn out the way that I had hoped. I still wear it but rarely. I love the fiber. It's made with eucalyptus fiber, so it's called their, uh, it's Wool and the Gang's 
Tina Tape yarn. And I really like it. It has a really nice drape. It's very lightweight. This is a summer, uh, spring-summer knit, warm weather knit. It's nice as like pajamas, to be honest. I don't really wear it too much uh, other than that. Because of the way that the neckline worked up for me. Again, all of the wool and the gang pieces that I've made were when I was still pretty new, trying to get the hang of things, and then I branched out. So you can see right here that there's just like some strange thing going on with the, the neck, the neckline, which is why I don't really like to wear it because it's just so obvious right front and center. And that's why I actually abandoned it for a while because I got discouraged, you know, with it, it wasn't turning out the way I had hoped. I was getting confused with the instructions. I don't think that the instructions in general are really difficult to understand. I just think that at the time I was having a hard time with them. So in all, the sunny tunic, I like it, um, but just not something that I would wear very often. I think the shape is nice. It's a nice classic long sleeve v-neck top. Very basic, very simple, a good, easy project if you wanted to get started with something with a little bit more technique. Um, but it's just too oversized for my liking. This is a size 2, um, which is my typical size, and I just think it's way too oversized. If I were to knit it again, which I probably won't, I would go for a smaller size just because I prefer that shape on me. Ooh. This one right here is my love. I love this one so much. So this is my cozy mock neck sweater. Uh, this one, like I was saying before, all of the patterns that I've followed by Wool and the Gang were when I was pretty new to knitting. But then I branched out and started writing patterns. And this was the first pattern that I ever wrote. And the one I'm most proud of, to be honest, because it's just so classic, it's so cute. Um, it's called the Cozy Mock Neck Sweater. You can actually purchase it on Etsy if you want to support me over there, which would be so great. Um, this one is just, yeah, 100% wool, 100% super chunky wool. It has a really classic shape, um, silhouette. I think the neckline is very flattering. I've made it quite a few of these. Uh, a couple to sell, and then also two for myself. So you've seen the white version of the Cozy Mock Neck Sweater, which I embroidered a heart on earlier this year. And this one is a, like, beautiful... What would you call that? It's like a beautiful brown, but it has some red and blue in it. This is made with We Are Knitters wool, like the wool, in the sunset colorway. And I don't know if you can tell from here, but there are some very beautiful variations in the in the wool, which paired with um, this blue, this periwinkle blue, which is purple haze, crazy sexy wool by Wool and the Gang. The two of them together, I think, look really beautiful together. It's knit on size 15 millimeter needles, size 12 for the ribbing, and it's a really good beginner project. Uh, it knits up so quick; literally, would take me two days. And um, I personally think it's a great staple piece that will really get you through the cold months. So if it's cold in your area, um, have a look and see if that's something that you want to do. Oh, but by the way, uh, so I've actually wanted to extend the sizes for this sweater. I originally released the pattern uh, for sizes small to extra large, and I would like to extend the sizes from extra small to 5XL if possible. So if that's something that you're interested in helping me out with, click the link in the description to apply via Microsoft Forms and I'll get back to you. So this is the Sable sweater. Um, it's a top-down raglan knit and I actually have a video for both of those patterns um, on how to knit those. Uh, if you purchase the pattern you will have step-by-step -step instructions on exactly how, so if you're nervous about top-down knitting, uh, definitely check that video out because I tried to make it as clear as possible. Typically the sable sweater pattern calls for two strands of Aran weight yarn held together. This sample here I experimented and knit with three strands of drops yarn, two strands of alpaca mix yarn, and one strand of alpaca boucle to make this really fuzzy fluffy top and oh my gosh you can see I really need to shave this sweater um, to 
get all the fuzzies out because while it doesn't shed a lot, but it does pill quite a bit, but I haven't really cleaned it up too much since it was first made. Yeah, it's just really soft. I feel like a teddy bear in this sweater. I think it's so cute. Uh, definitely not something that I can wear right now, but it's really just a classic sweater that you can just pair with about just about anything. So I really love it. It was so quick to make because it's knit on 12 and 11 millimeter needles. So really perfect for beginners on big chunky needles. Um, I would highly recommend giving Alpaca Boucle a try because it's super soft and the texture is just so beautiful. The last Me Made knit piece is this super large cardigan. <laughs> Uh, again, it was self-drafted by me. Um, it was just knit up with two strands of thick Touch Me Mohair. Touch Me Mohair? No. It was knit with two strands of Take Care Mohair on 15 millimeter needles. It was just a stash busting project and I love the sleeves. <laughs> you can actually see that one sleeve is bigger than the other. I was kind of just freestyling and then when it came to it at the end I picked up less sleeves on this one. Or maybe more sleeves on this one, I don't know. The huge sleeve factor is just amazing. Um, it's a perfect cardigan to wear on summer nights. Yeah, it's, it's really simple. I didn't really do too much with it. I just um, knit two panels for the, the front and joined it in the back and then picked up sleeves in the round and did um, knit two together around the cuff and cast off which, <laughs> like, look at this thing <laughs> I mean, this is an amazing sleeve, am I right? it's really good but it's kind of impractical as well like, just trying to hold anything you kind of have to have your hands in like a circle but yeah, it's just a really simple piece I think it's really cute um, I was planning on doing a pattern of this, but then as I was, you know, thinking to knit it up again, it was just way too... I don't know. I just felt like it was very simple. I, I feel like it's not something that was new, so I decided to just let it go. And I really don't feel like I need another one, at least at the moment. We'll see how much wear I get out of this now that it's getting a little bit warmer, and then I'll decide if I need another one. Okay, so the last things that I want to share are some sewing projects because now that the weather is getting a little bit warmer, I will be starting to focus a little bit more on sewing. It's always that time of year when I feel like that's when I'm most interested to sew because it gets warmer, not feeling like having a bunch of wool on me all the time. So yeah, I'm just going to go through some of my projects. The first one being um, my very first garment that I ever made, which is the Wixton Shift um, by... I don't know, I'm going to have to insert the, the, the artist there. This is made with Merchant and Mills linen. This linen was, I was just so in love with it when I saw it in my uh, local sewing store, fabric store. And I think it looks really nice with this dress. However, I don't wear it very often because I did not do a very good job since linen is very, um, it's a woven fabric, it, it unravels quite easily, so I'm seeing some areas where there's just strands hanging from all over the place, which, especially near the neckline, is kind of distracting, and it also makes me a little self-conscious to wear it in public, um, because I don't want people to see like all my, my bits and bobs <laughs> hanging out. So I think what I'm going to do is take this apart and use the fabric for another project, maybe like a top instead. Um, because I just don't get enough use out of this wrap dress, even though it's definitely something, it's definitely my style. I just don't think I did a good enough job. It was my first sewing project, so I have to give myself a little bit of grace. So I'll just reuse the fabric, because I know I love the fabric, and I'll turn it into a top that I'll really love. So, so the next one is my second sewing project, which, I mean, I took on some pretty <laughs> intense projects for my first go. This is... Um, and I should really look these things up before I start talking. So this is a jumpsuit by Paper Theory. Again, I think the fabric was Merchant and Mills, and oh gosh, this is such a beautiful color. 
I'm really happy with how this turned out. Honestly, I don't think this was a very tough project at all. A beginner myself could easily do it. Um, you just need to take time, you know, and that's something that I have a really hard time with. I'm very impatient, so uh, it's hard for me to slow down and read directions, but I think I'm really happy with how the bias tape turned out. Yeah, in general, I think it's a really nice piece. Um, there are some areas around the tie that could have been a little bit better, but, you know, nobody's looking over there and you wrap it around your waist anyway, so what's the big deal? The only thing that I don't like about linen, though, now that I'm thinking about it, um, all three of these pieces are linen, but it's just so wrinkly. You iron it, and then as soon as you walk out of the house, you're a wrinkled mess, so that's the only thing that just drives me crazy. And again, this third piece is also made out of linen. This is actually a self-drafted dress, and I'm impressed, honestly. Again, Merchant & Mills. Merchant & Mills, I will say, is my favorite fabric uh, manufacturer. Like, all the prints are fantastic. Uh, again, this grid pattern is so cute, and this blue is also very lovely. So I originally, I was kind of just winging it as I went, and this was meant to be like a cropped uh, tank top. I'm still very new to fabric amounts, what's required for different types of uh, projects. So, I mean, I usually overbuy fabric because I'm yeah, just not used to how much some fabric would take for a certain project. So I was going to do just a top, and then I realized I had so much room, so much extra left over that I could add a skirt onto it. And also I made the top originally just way too cropped for my liking, for my personal taste. So then I saved it by adding a skirt on the bottom. Very simple, there's nothing, it's really just a pull over your head kind of thing, so it's very boxy. Um, there's no elastic or anything in here. I just pleated the front and the back. I did some darts in the back as well to shape it, but I made sure that everything could go over my head and my chest easily. I'm impressed with this. I'm gonna have to do another self-drafted pattern at some point this summer, um, probably with a bed sheet. I have a couple of bed sheets that I could probably just cut up, which would be a lot of fun to do. I'm excited while I love to knit all times of the year, I'm really excited to dive more into sewing this year. I feel like my skills are getting a little bit better so that I'll be able to take on some really fun projects. So that's about it for what's in my Me Make Closet Part 2. I have to say I'm very shocked that I had enough projects for two videos worth of my Me Made Closet. I've only been knitting and sewing for about two to three years now and I'm just really amazed. You don't realize how much you get done until it's all there piled in front of you. So I'm very impressed. So I'd love to hear from you. Do you make your own clothes? Or has this inspired you to get started to make your own clothes? Because I personally think you'll really enjoy it and it'll be really worth your while. Thanks again so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more knitting and sewing DIY content like this. And I'll speak to you next time.